Out the back doors of the shop, we have some really nice wooded green areas with some beautiful paths that my neighbor Ed has helped me clean up. And he's always saying, you got to get out here and smell the coffee. So I decided to make some outdoor benches. I got started with a trip to my friendly local lumber dealer, Goose Bay Lumber, where I got some really nice southern cypress. It was wide and long and gave me lots of options in chopping things up. With the parts marked and back at the shop, I'm able to cut them to rough length on the chop saw. Then once I have them to rough length, I can bandsaw to rough width and I'll have some parts to then get ready for dimensioning further. The first thing I do is take it over to the joiner where I'll face one surface good and flat. Then with that face true and flat, it references off the table so I can thickness plane it to the final dimension. With that done, I'll joint one edge true and square and that edge will then reference off the table saw fence to rip the material to final width. With these straight pieces dimension, now I just need to cut them to length. And this Felder table saw makes it really easy. Even with long pieces, I just square one end, flip it around, flip down the stop and bump against, and then cross cut to perfect length every time. Then I'm ready to cut the curved back legs. So I've got a nice pattern I made from my drawing. I draw it all out on the cypress and then bandsaw pretty close to the line, but I'm not trying to be too fussy because I'm going to make a special jig so that I can shape these parts perfectly to dimension and so I won't have much cleanup. In order to do that, I'd be careful about my cut only at the bottom foot because that's going to reference off of the stop on my jig. And here I am like making the platform of the jig. I use the pattern to cut the front and back shape on a piece of, I think that's half inch Baltic birch. And then I tack the pattern to the Baltic birch and flush route. Now I have the front and back perfectly shaped. And then it's just a matter of installing some stops with some glue and I tack them in for the glue to dry. Then I put on some toggle clamps and I'm ready to go. I index off the base, snap them down, and head on over to the router where I can flush route these to the perfect shape, one after another. You get the first side done, flip to the other side, snap down the toggle clamps, and I've got the back side cleaned up in no time at all. The beauty about this method is when you get the leg out of the jig, it's exactly the same dimension and shape as the template. For making the curved back slat pieces, I just use another template and bandsaw again, just kind of roughly to the line in succession. Because like the back legs, I made a jig that I'm going to use to clean these all up. I'll first place each piece in and trim the face side. Then flip it around to the back and skim it across the shaper. And before you know it, I've got a whole set of perfectly formed back slats. It's time to cut some mortise and tenons. And I'm excited with this project because I'm going to use this new toy, the multi router from Woodpeckers. Now, I've been looking at these for at least 30 years in the backs of magazines and thought, man, that'd be nice to have. I could probably really crank out some mortise and tenons. And trust me, I now know I can. <laughs> but for all these years, I've just gone with the hollow chisel mortiser and the jig on the table saw, and that's been great. But if you want to do like little production runs, this is amazing. So I'm going to see how well it will do on this outdoor bench. I'm going to take my template and get it on this drawing. These are our regular full-size drawings for this outdoor bench and transfer that center line up 
on each of the critical joints. So I've got my seat rail, my arm, mortise and tenon, and then the crest rail up at the top. Then I just use the template to transfer the center lines to all the parts, and I'm ready for mortising. I love these pneumatic hold downs. They make quick work of holding the piece in place, and as you can see, the multi-router does an amazing job at cutting a clean, accurate mortise. Once I've got the straight parts done, I'm ready to lock in the curve parts and just one by one knock out all the mortises. And so I have another template that marks out where all the back slat locations are on the two back rails. And I just transferred all of these right onto the workpiece. And again, these are all just the center lines of the mortises we'll be cutting. With the mortises done, I'm ready to cut the straight tenons. And this is an accurate, very easy process where you just circle the piece, trimming the fibers to get the clean shoulder and tenon. And the stylus just follows this template to give you the perfect shape every time. There's no added trimming to do. And the most amazing part is how it fits like a glove. With those done, I'm ready to cut the angled tenons. This is where the arm goes into the back leg. And then the tenons on the end of the longer crest rails. After a quick change out, of the tenon templates, I'm ready to cut some shorter tenons. To tenon the curved back slats, I simply added a riser block to adjust for the angle on the table. And then one at a time, quickly process through all the back slats for what ended up being three benches. The most complex joinery I had to make was for the center seat rail. It was a twin tenon. I used a spacer block on the table, clamped it down, and mortised a second slot. Then using the same spacer block, I supported the actual seat rail to cut the twin tenons. After cutting the first tenon, I just removed the spacer block, clamped it down, and cut the second one. The nice thing about this method is it gives you simply the same spacing so that twin tenon fits perfectly. With all of the mortise and tenon joinery finished, I drew some templates from the drawing so that I could trace the curves of the seat rails and the arms, and finally get to cutting these shapes out on the bandsaw. I just cut straight to the lines. I like cleaning up these surfaces with spoke shave. It's nice to get back to the hand tools after all the machine work. And there's something very relaxing and pleasant about fairing these surfaces nice and smooth in a quiet way. I had a round over router bit, especially ground to about a three inch radius to softly round over or pillow surfaces where I wanted that added comfort feature. Here on the arm it worked beautifully and then I followed up with a spoke shave breaking the edges even better. The top of the crest rail got an even stronger round over so you'd have that comfortable place your arm would land when you put it around that special person. 
The front seat rail got a custom curve by first ripping on the table saw, then marking out the curve and finishing up with a spoke shave. The back leg needed a little more cleanup, which I did with the spoke shave. And then to prevent the back corner from chipping off, I added a chamfer. And for a final detail, rounded the top of the back leg by bandsawing a curve and then hand shaping a domed kind of effect. A little breaking in the edges with a block plane and it was time for sanding. I'll use the palm sander on the curved surfaces and the orbital on the flat. Then a little hand sanding to finish it off nicely. An inflatable sanding drum mounted between centers on the lathe makes easy work of sanding up all the back slats. And I can't believe it's finally time to glue it up. I'll spread some waterproof glue into all the joints beginning with the backrest slats first. Getting glue in the mortises and then on the tenons and working quickly to get them all fitted in before things start to set up. There's so many joints on this piece that I decide to only glue in the bottom section first and then dry attach the top rail. Once that's set, I can detach the top rail and have a much more relaxing time gluing the top tenons. So I clamp it all up temporarily, knock it together with the sides so that I know they're in alignment while the glue is setting. Then I can glue up the end sections one at a time making it simpler again, taking it in stages like this. I try to stay organized by getting the pieces all ready and by having rehearsed my clamping process. Again, I'll spread the glue in the mortises and then get it all spread and brushed onto the tenons and one by one, fit things together. It's satisfying to feel it finally coming together like this and then to see the clamps pull up all the shoulders of those mortise and tenons nice and tightly. Why not add a little decorative traditional overkill with some true quarter inch pegs which I shape by hand and then drive into the quarter inch hole. I like sawing them off with a sandpaper spacer and then sanding them so that they are left slightly proud with a domed effect. Now it's time to bring it all together. It's really important at this stage to have practiced and rehearsed all your moves and have all your clamps at the ready so you can move quickly and get the glue on all these joints. Again, I'm getting all the mortises and getting the tenons all brushed out. The nice thing about this Type Bond 3 is it gives you more open time so you can work with things. Oh, it's satisfying getting these twin tenons into the rails and then assembling the back section and the front rail into the side, which is much easier to do down into the floor. A quick clamp across that center seat rail and we can get our other end on by sighting it down into the mortises. Then I can stand the whole thing up and get the long clamps on the long rails beginning with the front. Then across the back rail. And lastly across the crest rail. What a relief to see all those parts come together as one final bench. 
After removing the glue squeeze out from all the joints, I added a special protective coating of epoxy on the bottom of the feet to prevent water from wicking up into them and decaying them early. The last thing to do was to attach the seat slats. I did that by adding some spacers to have them evenly spaced while I ran in some stainless steel screws. One final go over of the less than glamorous sanding process. And we're ready to apply our finish. Since all outdoor furniture requires pretty regular maintenance, I decided to use a fairly inexpensive and easy to apply deck stain in a cedar tone. And then just rolled and brushed and brought it all home. But this is nice, it sits nicely.